What's up guys, this is multi 24 gaming and I am here with the tutorial for Soundflower. Um, and so what Soundflower does is it takes the sound of uh, a game you're playing or a music you're listening to and it records it at the same quality as you hear it. So here's an example. Here's uh, Fade uh, by Alan Walker. Let's see here. As you can hear, it sounds just as good to you as it does to me. So this is really important, especially while uh, recording for games, uh, because you want the sound quality in your videos to be very good, and this is what's going to get you that. But the problem is, is that it is majorly confusing, and I have spent the last year and a half having issues with it, it messing up on me, recording hour-long videos, and then having it screw me over and have there be no audio or one of the input or the output wasn't working. So um, I'm here... To, I've never been able to find a video that helps people, and that's why I've spent the past year and a half forging my knowledge and learning. This video is for you guys, so you guys don't have to spend a year and a half trying to figure Soundflower out. Okay? So, there will be two parts to this video. The first part being download and install and, like, set Soundflower up. The second part being explaining, you know, all the settings that need to be done for different types of games. So just stay tuned and I'll show you how to do this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to go to your browser. I'm just going to take a tab and move it. Oh, what's happened? Okay. Move this over here to this desktop. Okay. And you're going to type in Soundflower like that. Uh, and then you're going to click right here, Soundflower Mac. Now, once you're here, uh, no. Once you're here, you've got a bunch of options for what to download. And they're all, e a lot of them are evil. See, download, big green download buttons. You gotta be careful, uh, because big green download buttons, they, uh, give you viruses. And so, uh, the way to figure out is if you hover over it, it'll tell you that says download Soundflower. That means it's the right one. And also up here, download Soundflower. That means it is the correct one. And so, now it should download. Uh, let's see. Has it downloaded? Let's just check here. Do, 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 do. No. Let's hit the alternative download. Your program is now downloading. If the download, yep, here we are. It's just downloaded. No ads. All right. So once you've got that, here you are, your Soundflower. And what you're going to do is you're going to double click on that, download and install all that stuff. <laughs> this thing's ads are ads. Anyway. You're going to download and install that, and then after that, you can just close out of it. It's in your system. It's in your computer. Okay? And so, uh, let's. I've already got it downloaded, just like every person who says, you know, does a tutorial. I'm using it right now, so I've already got it downloaded. So after that, you're going to go to Spotlight, or however, if you know where your audio MIDI setup is, and type in audio MIDI setup. I have it already in my dock, so you can click and drag it to your dock if you want to do that. So... For some reason, it doesn't open when, um, here we are, the second time. So he here we have our audio MIDI setup, uh, is what I call it. And here's all, this is where all the confusion is. It's really here. Okay, um, so what you're going to do is you're going to hit the plus button, and you're going to create an aggregate device, okay? So... With this aggregate device, what you're going to do is, as you can see here, I'm using headphones. I'm using Turtle Beach PX22. So if you're using headphones, you'd click Turtle Beach PX22, so like this, and then you'd click Soundflower 2 channel. If you're using, you're not using headphones, then you would click built-in output, or let's see, let me see here, uh, built-in microphone, I believe. Yes, because this is the input. Aggravate device is the input. So, built-in microphone. All right. And then for multi-output device, if you, you'll have to make another multi-output device. These are the ones I created for what I'm using right now. These two I'm making are just to show you. Make a multi-output device. Check built-in output device and Soundflower, or if you're using headphones, Turtle Beach PX22, if that's the bird. Uh, brand of headphones if you're using you're using uh if you if you have like beats or something it would say like beats or like wireless or something like that um so i don't need these so i'm gonna kill them um and then 
you're pretty much all set. Now, now, if you want all default settings, what you have to do, you've got these selected, Turtle Beach PX22, Soundflower 2 channel, or whatever your headphones are, or built-in microphone, depending on whether you're using just your microphone, or as you can see, I'm using the microphone that's on my headphones. That's why I have the headphones selected. Okay, and then multi-output device, Turtle Beach PX22, those are the headphones I'm using. If you're not going to use headphones, then built-in output and Soundflower 2 channel. No need for the 64 channel, that's just there. Alright, and so um, after that, what you're going to do is you're going to go to System Preferences. Now this is a very, this is very important. I, I got confused with this for a very long time. Then you're going to go to Sound, and you've got your input and your output settings, okay? For input, you're going to select Aggravate Device, okay? Aggravate Device for input. No, Don't click Soundflower 2 channel or any of that, log me in remote sound. Hit Aggravate Device, okay? For output, hit multi-output device and basically what that does is that connects your system preferences um, your preferences for what audio you're using to the audio MIDI setup that you've created okay so when you click multi-output device you're not going to be able to change the sound the sound change all happens up here in these settings and that's where it gets confusing so uh, click on part two of the video and I will show you all the settings that need to be done for that if you just want default settings and it seems to be working fine a lot of what I do to make sure all the settings are correct for what I'm trying to do is I'll make a test video so I'll hit the button and I've done it so many times that I already started recording this video demonstrated how I did it and then clicked and deleted the video thinking that I was making a test but I'll go to like iTunes and then I'll play a song like you know like a song like this or something and I'll like go down and up and stuff like that um so yeah click on part two of my video um it should be in the recommended or Maybe I'll be able to put a hyperlink in there, I'm not sure. Uh, but click on that, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. And I will show you exactly what sort of things you would use for other, um, and how to adjust the settings to make it so people's voices aren't super quiet and stuff like that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate your support, and um, I really hope that these videos help you to not have the year and a half uh trauma of recording tons of videos and having them get screwed over by Soundflower settings being too confusing. So, uh, alright, I'll see you guys in my next video, over and out.